Got we it. are red, red is run. Okay, good evening and welcome to Thursday, February 6, 2020, Selectman's Meeting. First thing on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Joe, stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. okay. First thing we have is the uh, second thing is to review and approve the minutes of January 30th. I think everybody has a copy. from the bottom, there was a discussion of prior betterment projects. They were sewer projects paid for through betterment fees. I think that should be clarified. Clerical Terry's with two hours on the under community action team. Same paragraph, uh, it says there was a discussion of obtaining a used vehicle for less than what is set aside for the match money to the grant and where how to obtain the Ford 12. It's, it, we, we're really not specific on what kind of vehicle we're, we are going to obtain. And is it going to be 12 or is it like 12 to 16? No, 12. Well, we, would, we would prefer 12, but it could be up to 15. But we we specified twelve. That's what we preferred. So twelve should stay. Right. On um, page two, parking on Morrison Avenue. Um, I think we should put the street number. Not for a second. So people know we're okay. we're talking specifically one property that has an issue. Is there any information on that? I have that. Okay. I have some too. Might be the same. It's 24, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's 24. Correct. Um, page three, other. Selectman Dawson asked if there was a process to check payroll before they received their check. So it was more than that. I actually asked um, Department of Labor had a process by which we could change our payday. Oh, I didn't understand that. Yes. 
page, that's a paragraph. That and that's the senior center will be turning <coughs> 10 this year. So we need some candy there. <coughs> Motion to approve the minutes as amended. Second. Okay. We have a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. The next thing is uh, Chuck Mitchell, town moderator on the 2020 elections. such thing as swearing anyone in, and they are, in fact, according to the books, and the law is called a selectman pro tem in your absence. Um, I'm trying to have two-hour shifts or so no one is going to be stuck doing the same job the whole time because some of them can be kind of boring, like if, if someone were to help at, at where we have someone with the cameras located filling out forms for those with no photo ID. We could probably have that partially covered by uh, someone who's supervisors of the checklist some of the time. I know, and then when we have greeters, and I would just want to mention briefly, um, <clears throat> this year when anyone, as people come in for the greeters, I'm having, uh, making sure that the greeters check for any kind of uh, political uh, campaign materials, such as hats, buttons, t-shirts, things like that, so we can try to uh, nab that before people get inside, which we haven't always done. Um, then checking to make sure that they're registered, if not, to send them into the right place. If they are registered, uh, have them take out their photo ID. And if they're not, have a photo ID, then send them inside. This year, they have to announce when they get to the ballot clerk their name, address, and party affiliation. Interesting. Which is a little bit different, but that is the law this year. Uh, we've got four lines that are going to have four ballot clerks set up this year. I'm going to have a couple of signs put on the doors right there that will have the, the, the names like uh, A through C, D through J, that kind of thing. So that if there's a line which sometimes does form out into the lobby out there, that people will be able to go right into the line if, if, if that line is empty rather than standing around and waiting. 
And also, uh, we're going to be telling people and reminding them that after they finish their voting, as, as they're exiting, they can go back to undeclared if they are undeclared to begin with. And basically, those are the only things that a greeter needs to do. But I think it'll be helpful as people enter instead of floundering around a little bit on the inside. So, Chuck. Yes. You can't go to undeclared if you are going in as a Republican or Democrat at that point? If you are currently registered as a Republican, you cannot change your party affiliation at the election. Well, I know at, but I'm talking when you leave, you can't. No, at, that's at the election. No. Okay. The only ones who can go back, and I say, oh, you, the only ones who can go to undeclared or back to undeclared are those okay. that enter as they are at undeclared. Okay. Yep. Jeff, when people come in to declare their party affiliation, if they're undeclared, do they declare it as what they wish to be? What they would do is when they get to the counter, they would say, my name is John Scanlon. My address is 347 East Main Street, and I am currently undeclared, but I would like a Republican ballot. You have to tell them what your party affiliation is when you get to the table, and if you're undeclared, they say undeclared. And then they would ask for whichever ballot they want. Um, just going down over this list real quickly, um, there's always a question of sometimes people who come in with, uh, uh, you know, that somebody hands some uh, thing outside to make sure that there are no, no political information left. And also, we know sometimes people walk off with a pen, so I'm going to have somebody checking on that. Uh, we did check out the, uh, uh, the AVS voting tablet today. That's that tablet that you, for the people who are blind or whatever, uh, and that does seem to be working. This year, someone who would be doing that could go right to the ballot clerk and get their actual ballot, Republican or Democrat. They then take that ballot and they bring that ballot into that voting booth. They then set up the, ta the tablet, is, it will be all set up, and they will put their ballot in the printer. They make their choice, and then they hit print, and all it does is fill in that circle on the ballot. That circle on the ballot then can be brought right out and put into the AccuVote machine, the same as any other ballot. So what it does in particular, it does not uh, in the past, those all had to be hand counted, so if you only had, let's say, one or two people using it the whole day, you could tell who they were and who, the, who they voted for, and the, the idea was to get rid of that, so no one would be able to know. So you have to bring their information to the ballot clerk with your name, etc., etc. Yep. So, uh, just down here that uh, people will go back to undeclared and, and uh, is, we're going to need to have somebody who will be at that table. And again, being at these various stations, you know, there's some, you've got to be real careful on putting people back and there will be rulers there to make sure everybody's, everything lines up just correctly, the same as with the ballot clerks. And so, anyone who's going to do that will make sure you get some minor training or whatever it is before you do that. And again, uh, checking outside periodically for uh, making sure people are without. <laughs> the wonderful thing about Tilton with its 200 foot limit, it's funny because you know, I talked to some of the other moderators and they, they, they have issues with people. The state law is like so many feet from the door, but it's not 200 feet, so we're very lucky. And let's see. So that takes care of, I think, what we've asked you folks to help with. I just want you to know that, as in the past, the uh, moderate, excuse me, Attorney General's office, and I've got seven pages of a checklist that I'll be glad to share with any of you, and I can send it to you as a PDF form or whatever. But it asks all kinds of things on here, and just a quick summary of just a couple. They want to make sure that, for example, there is proper handicap parking, traffic control by the police, no unattended political signs on the property, um, all the rock proper signage that has to be put up in the lobby, which the town clerk does every year with all the different copies of the ballots and whatever. And it goes on and on and on. They check the supervisors of the checklist to make sure they're doing everything correctly, and they check on the supervisors, everybody. So. One of the things that sometimes may not, you may not be aware of is there's just a voluminous amounts of stuff.
including you know how wide the entrances are. It goes on and on and on, and the, the attorney general's office comes up. And typically, we have done we've had flying great, great uh, results on that being checked off. The only other thing that I think needs to be brought up, or I would want to let you know, is I'm bringing in a cardboard box this year as a ballot box. And this was recommended by the state in that if, and we have had this issue before, that the uh, AccuVote machine jams up. And in order to unjam it, you need to get the right key. And the city's not right there, and the key isn't right there, then you've got to pull the thing apart. So in case there is an issue where it does jam, then we can have people put the ballots into like a cardboard box, and I'll have that all set. And then later, when the machine is, is available, then we'll have those ballots inserted. And if that happens, I will make sure to announce. And this is the point is made, make sure you announce publicly what you're doing and why, so that people don't think you just have a stack of ballots and you're shoving them in. And uh, needless to say, uh, we're going to have things uh, hopefully a little bit better than the state of Iowa. Is it going to that go bad? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care so oh, much. Oh, really? You're not watching the news? Oh, yeah. They still don't. Like, they still don't have a total. Yeah, they're not 100%. The word is that New Hampshire's totals may be in before Iowa's. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. Yes. <laughs> And I'm hopeful tonight that you will approve the names of two people, Jan Landry and also Kim uh, Souls, to be uh, ballot clerks because uh, right now we uh, are in need to have someone that will help come and cover uh, during when people take breaks. And otherwise, I, I have four ballot clerks that will be there full time, but you know, they can't stay there. At their, at their time. And then the last item, I think I sent copies of this to everyone. There was, a, I had a request uh, from Dave Fox. I think I sent you emails. Yes. You look puzzled. You didn't see census. it. I, census. Right. He, the table. He contacted me. Oh, yes, me. I did see yeah. it. He contacted me. Hang on. Just, Hang on. Hold on. I was just going to say, he, he's withdrawn. He's, he's not planning to set up. <laughs> OK. Well, he contacted me and wanted to set up a table in the lobby. Uh, and went on saying that they're having a, a real hard time finding people uh, uh, to agree to become census takers and wanted to have a table and be able to sign people up. Uh, but I'm glad that that's not going to happen. I think it would not be a positive thing. And I was going to defer any action on that to the select board. I take care of running the election, but I don't want to take care of that. Any questions? So <clears throat> uh, Chuck, you had mentioned Janice Landry and Kim Souls were ballot clerks. Did you not need? Uh, I will use the words inspector of elections, excuse right. me. Okay, I thought you said ballot clerks. They are, but the ballot clerks come from those who have been appointed inspectors so of elections. So you're looking for approval on both of them to be? Those two, yes, please. And do you need a vote from the board or just consensus? Uh, I think a vote would be nice. I'll accuse myself. I make a motion to approve Kim Soul and Janice Landry. Janice Landry. Uh, to be inspectors of the election. Inspectors of the election for the upcoming election on February 11th, 2020. Second. Motion and a second. No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And, and before you, did you have anything else? I, before you go on, I have a couple things. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so officer coverage, I think we're, we've got the coverage we need. I've, I've talked to the police, and uh, if the selectmen are good with it, they'll have three officers there until the close of the polls, and one will uh, take the, um, the um, election materials down to Franklin afterwards. That's good. acceptable. All right, um, set up and help on February 10th. Um, do you have what you need, Chuck, or do you need some more help? We're gonna have the DPW there at 2.30 to lay down the tarps and stage the, um, the voting booths so that when they're ready to go in and set them up, they'll, yeah, at 3.30, they'll do that. Yeah, I, 
I believe I did hear that today. The one thing is that if they're going to bring the materials over and put them in the lobby ahead of time, yeah. they probably want to get it done before 2.30 because of the uh, school buses are in there at 2.30. It would be good if they could bring it over like around 1 o'clock or something like that. That's what they've done in the past. Okay. If we're going to set up at 3.30, why wouldn't they bring them over at 3-ish? Because they have to set them up anyway. Why would they bring it over early? Um, well, the way that I understand it is they just put everything in the lobby and get it ready right. to take in. So it's it's all set up and just easy to The buses are gone by 2.40. Usually 2.35 they pull out of the bicycle. I'm just matter. saying it's just, I mean, I was just curious. So either Why time would work? Yeah, whatever you, I'm sure the DPW will come. That works for the public you works director. I'm happy. I was curious. Do you have a preference? Chuck? Oh, good heavens, no. No, I mean, we can't get in there until they, they cover the floor. And I will tell you that although if they start covering the floor as early as 2.30, they may be out of there by 3. It usually doesn't take them that long. Okay. Um, I expect to be there by 3. Okay. That's and do you need any other help? I'll be there. Anytime people can come, that would be great. I have just the bodies that will be there. Yeah. It's supposed to non physical bodies? Well, I suppose people are going to sit and watch. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> and the last issue is the poll hours. So the selectmen voted to have the polls open from 7 to 7, which is an hour earlier. It was brought to our attention that um, it was actually. The selectmen voted on January 2nd for a February 11th election, and they needed actually 60 days. So I've gone back and forth with NHMA. What's the leak? What, what are they going to do if we do well, it? That's, are they, gonna, that's exactly they don't know, do they? Well, that's what I said. I said, what are the consequences if we turn it, you know, if we, if we stick with 7 o'clock in the morning? So I just wanted to, I, I didn't get any answer for that. They said, this is a law. That was the response. This is a law. So uh, I want to know what do you want to do because right now we've got it posted at seven o'clock on the website. We've got it seven o'clock on the seven o'clock on the bulletin board. The signs have not gone up, up yet, but the signs uh, will need to be changed because they're typically the election starts at eight. So, so we've already got, a, got notices out there at seven. And Chuck, I think, showed you this chart about. If I could add two cents on this. See, in the past, we've had a number of people who have shown up before 8 o'clock and said, oh, I was hoping you would open at 7. And they know that it's both Sanberton and Northfield hours are 7 to 7. I know we have some people who don't want to get up and be there by 7. We would prefer to be there at 8 o'clock. But um, I think it's a good service to the town to be open. The statistical data that I gave you shows that in the state, they have, in some communities, they found a significant number of people do vote between 7 and 8 o'clock. Uh, however, I mean, in it, not only this election, but in any future elections, this is something that is either subject <coughs> to the approval of town meeting or subject to approval by the select board. And I guess that's a decision that's in your hands. Here. Chuck, your uh, ballot box will also give us voter printout by time frames, right? So we could see from 7 to 8 how many votes were registered? No, but I'll tell you what, I you can, I can tally. do that. Okay. I can tally them uh, by the hour. That would be nice just to, sure. as, a, as a quick track. Well, it, of course, it won't make much difference if you don't open it at 7 o'clock. Sure. But I still do it by the hour. I'll have a sheet right there, and I'll have it right there, so we can write it down like every hour, hopefully on the hour. So, just been made knows what was going on. How would you like to proceed on this? Well, I know how. I'm worried we've already got the word out, although I regret not speaking to other election officials before we made the decision, but that's too late anyway. Eight o'clock. But um, we've already got notices up for seven out there. The website and on the bulletin board. We announced it at the January 2nd meeting. I'm not sure 
you know, how widely watched that is. Should be a selectman telling them that. that it will be. Hi <laughs> <laughs> there. Right. So glad you're going to be here all day. So, so, you. so just to be clear, I'm going to call the Secretary of State's office tomorrow and find out. And if he says it needs to be changed back to eight o'clock, that's what we'll do. Correct. Everybody else on board? Yes, there's no repercussions yes. today. Yeah, if the, if the Secretary of State has changed it, I'm going to change it. Yeah. Okay. If so, not, we leave it, right? Then, no, right. If he, if he says it's okay to leave it, then leave it. Yeah, but leave if, it. if he says we need to change it to 8 o'clock, then we'll just make sure that we advertise it. Hard. As much as we can. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have one more question, Jeannie? Uh, I was going to ask you, I did ask you about candidates now. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, I thought while I'm here, like, we could have a brief discussion on, on uh, candidates tonight. Um, since I've done this in the past, what I would be willing to do is put together what I have used in the past. And my intention had been an, an advice of my counsel, which is sitting behind me, <laughs> to ask uh, people like, three questions and then hopefully not go from one to each other and then we have to try to address like three points and I will tell you, I'll share that with you once I, I put it on print, yeah. but uh, I don't think anybody, I mean right now the really, <coughs> I think the only contended election is, uh, is for select board and I think people are going to want to hear from the five candidates for two seats, so. Mm -hmm. Is fire contested? We, last time we invited five. We invited, I think, every one last time. Oh, and school we did too. this, including school district, uh, school board seats, uh, budget committee. Are they contested? Do you know? I don't. I I'll have to you. look. I'll have to look. But I remember last time uh, Nina Gardner came. I wanted to do it early because she had another commitment. So. What night are you planning on doing it? I can do it virtually. Anyway. If you want to do this all by yourself, or unless you feel you want to do it on a Thursday night, and you want to do it on a night where we could run it and say, okay, here's what we have for time. We should do it on Thursday because we give up our time slot. Rather than saying Wednesday night and saying to the budget committee, you can't meet on Wednesday night because they're all done now. So we're planning on Tuesday, you can't meet because. Oh, yeah. If you want to do it on the Thursday, you can say start at 7 o'clock and run from 7 to 8. Or you want to do it on from 6 to 8 or 6 to 7. Or do you want to do it on a different Wednesday night? I don't care. I can you, be any preferences, anybody? Thursday. Okay, Thursday? Thursday, Thursday 3.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking 6.47. <laughs> Um, six, I think, probably. You, you're gonna, it, unless, we don't know if fire is contested or school board is contested because there would be some questions in answering there along with the selectmen. The other ones are no, and it would be a short meeting because they're not contested. So it's kind of like an hour or two hours, really. So you want to start either at six or seven. Five. I think the earlier you start, the better, but uh, mm -hmm. the other thing too on the fire, I mean, I'm hearing rumors already about something being brought back up about separating the two towns no. again. And then, no, I can uh, tell you that. Oh. Yeah, they didn't get enough signatures. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So which Thursday? But filing for candidacy, I, I can check with the file, the fire district, or I have, 
Okay. We have a list. list. We have a list downstairs. I just haven't looked at okay. it. So what Thursday would you like to mm -hmm. have the candidates night? Well, we typically, I typically come in prior to the um, uh, town town meeting. Um, so then you and, have and so if the last date for the town meeting is the 27th, then let's do it on the 20th, which is the week before. Well, we have the 5th, right? What, March 5th? Yeah, you could. I can meet with you on March 5th. But then then they only have a couple of days to decide who's going to pick. Like the last week, uh, Over the February. Full, the last full week, right? Yeah. So yeah. that would be the 27th. That's perfect. February 27th it is. At 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Yeah. And I will, uh, I will forward you all, Six and, and, well, and Jeannie, the, uh, the rough questions I wanted to ask, and if you have anything you'd like to add or whatever, just get back to me. Okay. Great. Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Every time I get up, I get up. Jeff, I just want to... Can I read rudely off for one minute? Sure. We're right, uh, right. now talking about the election, so... Well, what's happening is this. Because of everybody at this table, and you got an all this land, Pat especially, supporting us, that I know of right now, we're going to hire at least 25 people on the tilt. But that means my goal is 1% of our population, which is 36 people. But that would mean we got four times any other part of the state. And it, that's my goal. So, uh, sorry, I've been running. So, you guys helped us bring jobs home. Thank you very much. That we did get the okay from the moderator and the attorney general to set up the table away from the bowling places in the foyer. But then my boss got cold feet. I was going to come here as courtesy and tell you we wanted to. We don't want to anymore. So it's no longer a problem. Okay. So it's solved. The only thing I do ask is outside the polling area if you can put a stack of our brochures. And that's it. And it's legal. I vote the attorney general and the moderator said it's legal. It's non political. Well, he, so we he runs the meeting. We don't have a table. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you behind me. We don't usually have a table in the lobby, right? <laughs> Where are you? I vacated that seat. Oh, Jesus. So would that be okay, right? Chuck? What's it's that? okay with you, Chuck? To, yeah, to, I see no problem. You know, one of the things that uh, typically is that, uh, yeah, we can put a table outside and, and, and where it's not going to interfere with any traffic and people can pick them up or not. So That's my they, be sure and ask for an extra small table. Well, yeah, and if it doesn't happen, the world will spin. What's your okay. use? Okay. I mean, it's not a panic situation. Okay. I do have to hire in the next three or four weeks 6,000 people in the state of New Hampshire. So if you don't, any of you know anybody that wants to work, these jobs start at 20 bucks an hour. And you pick the days, you pick the hours, you work from home. So and it doesn't affect. Oh, and it's exempt from uh, state aid, food stamps, and all that stuff. And Social Security up to forty-eight thousand is exempt. How about income tax? Income tax will hit. Well, it, no, income tax will hit you. But still, you know, twenty bucks an hour, twenty-five bucks an hour on Sunday. So if I were picking my days. I pick Sunday. And I'm working, I was just okay to work seven hours a week. Um, you can work as much as you freaking want. <laughs> uh, where do they apply? Where do they apply? I will, good God, I will get you that information. Census 2020 oh, oh, slash apply. It's just the 2020 census. Right. Um, slash jobs. Right. Gov. And the information will be at. It's going to be at, yeah, it's downstairs. It's on the walls down there. Yeah. I just didn't bring cards upstairs with me. That's okay. Yeah, we can grab it off the wall. It's on all the signs. We're having three days in Tilton still where applicants can come and we'll sit there with a computer and help them do the app. Okay. You know what? Thanks for running actually behind. So. I know, I screwed you up. But that, no, you didn't. Yeah. You oh, clarified you a lot of stuff for us. You can so. be a felon as long as it's nonviolent, and you do not have to have a high school diploma or equivalency. Excellent. 
What you need to do is make sure you post it on Twitter and Facebook. They won't let us. Okay, the next time we have uh, okay. Thanks, my boss is Keep coming. They're very strict. That's why they no longer want to do that. Okay. I get in trouble a lot. Thanks, Chuck, for your willingness. Hey, Chief. Yeah. Oh, What's up? You were yes. going to talk about the federal forfeiture program. Uh, last week I presented you all with a letter um, asking you to approve this uh, federal forfeiture uh, program for the, the vehicle. And the selectman asked if you'd come back and give them a little bit more information about why you need this. So just a little background with these large with these large drug cases that detectives have been working, um, the, the, the larger ones become U.S. attorney cases, federal cases, and if there's a vehicle involved uh, in the um, transportation of the drugs as part of the business, they uh, seize the vehicle, it becomes part of the case, and when the case is resolved uh, and there's either a plea or a um, guilty, then the federal government asks us do we want to have that vehicle auctioned off and use the uh, uh, remaining funds from that vehicle for future drug investigations or do we want the vehicle uh, to be used for drug investigations ourselves. So an example of that is this particular vehicle, uh, we're always doing you know, a lot of undercover work to put these cases together which involves surveillance and uh, sometimes undercover buys, and they use vehicles that aren't registered, or I won't say not registered, but they're not marked or unmarked vehicles. They're usually vehicles that look like the average vehicle going down the street for obvious reasons. And those vehicles, after being used for that purpose for you know, sometimes six months or even less, uh, they become known to the drug users, drug dealers rather. And so we, we typically, in undercover drugs, will rotate vehicles around. We use rental cars, we use loan vehicles. Um, and it's just part of the business to put the cases together. So talking to the detectives, they felt like that particular vehicle would be something that they could use for uh, drug investigations. Um, and if not, the vehicle would eventually be uh, auctioned off at some point, and then some money would come back to us for to drug investigations in the way of forfeiture. Anybody have any questions? Joe? Um, you have a car right now, correct? We do have one that we use for drug investigations, yes. So if we get another one, does that car go away? Um, not necessarily. If it's Like I said, if that vehicle is already known in some of the cases we're working, where the suspects themselves recognize that vehicle, then we may switch and use another vehicle, and that happens sometimes. Usually if you have an undercover vehicle, you use it for buys, and you've had it for a couple of years, it gets out there. They know the vehicle, but they're like, oh yeah, that's the police. And it becomes an officer safety issue. Once they start to recognize us undercover, our vehicles undercover, it, it increases the danger for them. So, so um, why not switch, why not take one? Why not take it and switch? rather than keep both of them, and can, is that in our budget? Did you prepare for that in our budget, for the maintenance and, and all that? Yeah, so um, Highway does do the oil changes on it, and, we, still have to pay for and it. we do have to pay for it. And it's, the one that we have now is kind of part of our, you know, annual maintenance program as far as oil changes and tires. So. It's definitely something we'll have to talk about when that happens, if we're going to keep that second one or not. And I would certainly come back to you after the case is resolved. It would be, it would probably be um, sometime late in the summertime before we know. If we choose not to, then they would just auction that vehicle off. So you're asking us to, to uh, make a decision to get a vehicle now. If and when you might decide to keep the second one, you don't know whether you're going to keep the second one or not, and you might, uh, if you do keep it, we'll discuss it later whether or not you have enough money to maintain the second one. I think Kev, is that what I'm hearing? Kev, the form right now is just asking if we want to be part of the, the seizure of the vehicle, right? Yeah, the form is just asking if we want to accept 
seizure of the vehicle um, and take custody of that vehicle. Um, and sometimes when these cases go, detectives need to work in teams, so I can't be riding in the same undercover car because <laughs> if, if someone's trying to lose them and they're tailing them, then there's a second vehicle that can't be recognized. I see. Um, that's kind of where they wanted to go with it, have that option of second vehicle. Mm -hmm. They will be used all the time. And so it would be kind of a minimal cost on maintenance, really. And like the chief said, we wouldn't hold on to it for a long time because it's just, eventually get money and just try to rotate it out and it after a while. So, um, yeah, so I think the idea is that if the board would agree to accept taking custody of the vehicle if um, it is forfeited, if the forfeiture finding is through, um, then we take custody of the vehicle and we utilize it for a certain amount of time and then we can be done later on. So. Are these vehicles kept at the station, or are they driven home? Uh, one is kept at the station. So yeah. I guess we don't want to get too beyond many specifics about that. Uh, no, that's fine. But beyond maintenance, this gasoline, the future is going to be registered and all that good stuff. We have a price of about $3,000 to maintain it for gasoline. But a van we may purchase. The, um, so this is an expense. I mean, if it's sitting there at the station or wherever and it's not pounding miles on it because it's driven where it shouldn't be. I don't think the gas is an issue because there'll be a, a vehicle driving, whether it's this one or the current one they have or a different one, you're still burning fuel. Yeah, I don't know. I've been looking at the sure. mileage chart. So it's not okay. it, it If you have two vehicles sitting in the yard, and they're not being used, it's, you, you're still paying the insurance on them. That's for certain. So it seems like the concern is that we're accumulating too many vehicles and we're not phasing out any vehicles. Um, I mean, are there other vehicles? Maybe we could phase out um, some of the uh, Crown Vic or something like that to just reduce our fleet down so that we're mm -hmm. at least you know, take something off the road, put in mothballs. I mean, we have to look at which one is the worst and go from there, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Aren't the Crown Vix pretty much detailed cars, other than what the prosecutor? Mm -hmm. Correct. So depending with the that car, you may cut your nose off, because now you'll have shifts that'll go out of town because you don't have the vehicle. Parking's an issue where you are. Can those detailed vehicles be parked at the town garage? Mm -hmm. And is that where they are kept? The detailed cars? Usually during this time frame this season. We're trying to keep them down there. Uh, when there's more demand for them, and we know solid detail details that we might bring back to our lot. Why not just leave them there? They're not working for the town of Tilton when they're on details. So why not just leave them there and free up space at the station? Well, the officers have to come to the station to usually change, so no, the car's can, available to them. They can go get the car and go do their other job. It's a second job. So, uh, yeah, I, if we can keep on the subject well, of keep the vehicle or... That's the other issue, we, you know. We hear all the time it's not enough parking, not enough parking, but we're talking about requiring yet again another vehicle where you're parking. Well, don't answer that. Yeah, because that means sometimes that's a, your house. <laughs> <laughs> It'll blend in. Yeah. A different location, I guess. Thank right. you. With the others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. wow. John. Hey, in the audience. Right, yeah, go ahead, Paul. Hi, I'm Greg Boulder. Uh, Chief, did, did I hear you say that the car could go up to auction after you're done with it? It can, yes. And where would the money for that go? Back to the forfeiture account, which is what we use to do the undercover investigation, so to buy drugs. So that money comes back into the state. <coughs> so maybe that's another way to fund it, as these cars kind of are identified, and no longer on the use, you sell the car, and hopefully you you guys are for getting another forfeiture down the road as you nail another drug dealer. So, 
it could be kind of a sub page you go type of thing with the cars down there. Okay. Anything else? So which way are we going? Somebody's got the letter. We've got the letter. Um, I mean, if somebody wants to make a motion to approve it, or read it as it's right there. Yeah, I'll read it. Yeah, I'll read it. Okay. Yeah, I'll read it. make a motion. The Tilton Board of Selectmen hereby approve the acceptance of the no. vehicle through the forfeiture program offered through the federal forfeiture program. This vehicle will be used for drug investigation and surveillance. Second. Discussion. Catherine? You look like you're about to Well, I just, I'd say yes if they were going to put it the other one. I just, you tried to run on these Sorry. It's, 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 there is it's more money Catherine. to spend, and I just don't think we should spend more money. Um, you know, I'm all for getting it. I think we'd have to have some type of, I'd like to see some type of timeline saying that the other vehicle will be auctioned off and then that money could be used, even if it's like a couple months out or, or if we have another vehicle that will be taking off the road because I just see the number of vehicles and the cost and that's what I mean. Um, Peter? So if uh, the police department provides us with data that the detailed cars are well worth keeping because of what they're generating, you're just going to cut bait? I don't know. They generate a lot more. They buy the cruises. Mm -hmm. As I said, or. Mm -hmm. That's okay, so any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Let's record check, please. Pat, you're it. <laughs> you want oh, to go in? Aye. Now, which I was that? Because Catherine said I as an A, so I'm just clarifying. I would have said no if it was a no. Okay. So that's a yes? You for yeah. But Chief, come up with a plan to get rid of the other one. This is just a. Make the record show that the chief is going to come in with a plan to get rid of the other one. As the minutes reflect. Well, I, I think that's but that wasn't part of the motion. I'm, I'm asking him to but do that as part of the minutes. If it was part of the motion, I would have voted as oh, yes. Me too. Yeah. Well, I didn't make the motion, so. Yeah, we already voted, so. But I'm asking you to put it in the Good. minutes that I've asked the chief right, I'll, to I'll do that. So the motion passes mm -hmm. and. Let the record show the record that Pat Constantino asked the chief to come up with a plan to change out the other one. I think the Lamborghini, the red Lamborghini would be a little bit obvious. <laughs> okay, the next one we have um, is uh, Kali Chrisman from NextEra Energy. Um, could I ask if everybody, I believe there's a sign-in sheet somewhere here. Could pass that around.
Is it okay to stand right here? Well, they like to get you on the microphone. So. The camera's right over there. Camera's well, yeah, you don't need to come over here and speak into the mic. Right. You guys feel fine. And yeah, I'll give up my seat. Point, correct. Listen, I'll go over there and you can sit over here. The microphone right there. Right here. 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 And we are, come, we are here today to talk to you about a proposed solar project called Tilton Solar. And the team that I have with me today is Hagen Lee, who is the developer of the project. And he'll talk in a little bit more detail about the project and the design and the map. Um, and then I have Jonathan Gravel, who is our environmental specialist, and Vicki Chase, oh, right here, as well. She's an environmental and permitting specialist. Take it away, Hagen. We only accounted for 15 minutes tonight, so I That's fine. Make yeah, sure we're just giving you a high level yeah. overview. Okay. Yep. okay, good. I didn't want yeah. you to be surprised. <laughs> okay. Thank you, for, thank you for your time. Um, my name is Hagen, as uh, Kaylee had mentioned. Tilton Heights Energy Center is a 19.9 megawatt solar farm. It was contracted uh, through Connecticut Deep RFP, uh, issued in 2018 and the contract was approved in 2019. The project has a target COD of December 2023. So it has quite a bit of time to do careful studies um, and incorporate uh, community uh, feedback and um, obtain necessary permits to hit COD by the end of 2023. We're very excited for this opportunity. We have uh, seven landowners currently signed and additional landowners showing interest. It is located, uh, I'll point to the map there. It is located, so first imagine the 115 KV transmission line and where it intersects with Califf Hill Road. So from that point, the project is on the north side and the west side of that intersection. Um, it is tucked away in the wooded area. A lot of that has been logged previously. Um, we believe <coughs> environmental impact will be minimal. And we're conducting careful studies uh, this year and we'll continue to do so next year. So because we have some time on this project, we'll be doing more studies and reaching out to the town for feedback and consultation, probably beginning uh, late 2020, early 2021. Yeah, I'm John Gravel, Nextera, environmental lead for the project. And as, as Hagen was pointing out, um, our plan for permitting and additional surveys will continue, be, continue this year. And I just want to stress that our reach out, our outreach with the town is very important to us. And getting um, feedback from the town to make sure this is a harmonious fit for the town, it's very important for us to to work well with the host community. To, to name a few uh, benefits of the project, it will uh, help New England Power Pool meet uh, certain clean energy uh, goals. Um, and it was procured by Connecticut. So you can say the project is paid for by Connecticut utilities, but the direct investment and economic benefits will land here. Um, temporary construction jobs, and permanent increase in tax base, tax revenue, because this project is a net contributor. It does not consume uh, town resources, such as school, uh, sewage, water, police, or, or fire uh, municipal services. It will be sitting there quietly and generating revenue in terms of uh, property tax increases for the town, and as well uh, as income for the landowners. Um, and I wanted to introduce you to uh, Vicky. She's a local scientist uh, with TRC, and uh, she'll be an integral part of permitting this project. Uh, as Hagen mentioned, I'm, I do live locally. Um, 
I'm very familiar with the area. I'm also familiar with the site, and I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll be back to see you all in the future. Do you have any questions? Um, so you, at some point, you're going to want to do a public hearing and question and answers and stuff like that. You're planning on doing that somewhere towards the end of 2020? We would first plan it in, in consultation uh, with the select board or community leaders to make it most productive as possible. But uh, we're planning, we want to have more information available for the public in exactly. such a, at, at such an early stage of the project. So 2021, maybe. Um, and Peter? Um, I haven't seen anywhere, is this project going to pay its full taxes or is this going to be a payment in the lieu of taxes, a pilot project? So most projects uh, will seek some type of a tax stabilization agreement or a pilot. Um, we would welcome any. So if you've got none, then what happens to this project? Is it dead in the water or do you continue? Our hope is that, so we invest up front a large sum of money and then recoup um, that investment over a 30 years period of time. So certainty of our costs, operating expenses is very important. Um, so whereas tax uh, fluctuates, so we would like to seek a agreement where we know exactly how much we have to pay every year. So with the property owners, and uh, if you ask them, they just got whacked a couple months ago. So um, our values just went through the roof. And what happens is if you get a break, then the rest of us have to pick up the slack because we still have to pay the bill. If everyone pays their share, it comes out more equal. So a lot of towns in New England um, have entered into various forms of tax agreements with solar farms. And most of them are happy because like I said, solar farms are net contributors. Uh, they don't consume town resources. So in effect, it would be subsidizing the rest of the town's use and consumption of those town resources. The Next Try Energy Catherine. grew this company based on the subsidies the government gives for solar farms, wind, etc. I would say next year. That was that I. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I did read about next year energy, and that's how they became such a giant. It really didn't cost them practically anything because of those subsidies. And I'm probably not using the right term for it, but. So next year energy is over 90 years old. Um, we also own Florida Power and Light. I would like to argue that the way we became the um, most efficient and respected utility uh, in the world uh, is through financial discipline and low cost of energy delivery. We're one of the safest utilities in the world, um, and that's how we've been able to accomplish uh, what we've accomplished. But so yet, this, just, just to clarify, um, ma'am, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. What do you pay for your electricity to, to today? I have no idea. My son pays it. Or expensive. So, so, sir, wait, what do you pay for your electricity today? It's sort of a moot point. No, I, I, I'm just trying to demonstrate. Well, I'm get paying 200 a month this time of year, probably 150 in the summer. So, what, what is that typically? How many cents is that per kilowatt hour? I'm not sure what ever source is up to. Uh, we guess, I think we average between 12 and a half and 13. And okay. Great. So this solar farm will be generating electricity for uh, the ratepayers around 4.2 cents a kilowatt hour. And I thought you said it's going to Connecticut. So that doesn't help me here in Tilton. The power is injected here in the New England power. Uh, I, I understand. It's sort of like... Uh, but paid for by Connecticut utilities. It's, so It's like Northern Pass. Going to come right down through the state and go right to well, Connecticut. I, th I think maybe we can ask a lot of questions. We'll Greg, obviously, we'll have some public hearings, sure. and, and we're going to have to schedule some time for that. And so, there's if there's any like real questions or quick questions and concerns, we have about five minutes.
left. Um, I just have two we'll quick go. questions. One is, uh, two. what permits uh, do you require from the town for it? And the second thing is, on the on the chart you have there, is the point of interconnection, is that where you access the property? Okay. The point of interconnection is where we interconnect the project um, to the grid. Okay. There's already there's already a tap station there, so you'll see extra equipment there, uh, which is which is not ours. So, and that's how you're accessing the site, the 300 acres. Uh, these specific access roads haven't been designed or planned. Uh, we're going to conduct more environmental studies to determine all that and engineering. And what <laughs> permits did you require from the town? Yeah, the town permitting um, that we're expecting now is the site planning board, uh, site, site review through the planning board, as well as um, consulting and working for a probably variance or working with the zoning board to determine um, the proper zoning. With conservation commission too. And consulting yeah. conservation commission. What percentage of the total acreage of those lots have you already uh, reached contracts with? So what's what's shown or um, drawn under that orange line is all contracted so far. Two hundred ninety-six acres. You've already come to agreement with everyone. Yes. It's inside that orange area. Yes. The lease land. It's a it's a mixture of option to lease and option to purchase. Yeah. Yeah. You are aware that the yeah. egress or entryway that you have shown up there is a private driveway? Top right. Yeah. yeah. So that is um, an access easement that we've signed with that landowner. Uh, which landowner? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Their property is abutting on both sides. Yeah, of that. That, that landowner, uh, I believe that family's last name is uh, Suter. And again, that's not necessarily showing where we're going to access the project. That's just kind of showing where we have land control to do our surveys. Um, so accessing the, that property. That's, that's kind of what we're showing this is our study area with the outline of this property. Could you tell me how many panels we're talking about? Um, at, this point, at this point, it's very difficult to say. Technology changes a lot. And, you know, this is, like I said, end of 2023. Um, so majority of the land you see here will probably end up being used as some type of a setback area or a protection area or a wildlife or watercourse feature setback protection area. So in New England, the permitting rules are very stringent and it's, it's not unusual that majority of your land um, or our land goes towards protecting um, features. So in the, go ahead, follow up. In Samberton, they have roughly, I think it's 100 acres, and they're talking 15,000 panels. So if we look at this, would it be um, up to 300 roughly acres you have there, would it be 100 acres of panels, or 200 roughly, or percentage of what that space would hold? Um, I think just, we haven't done enough studies to say this, uh, but just my gut feeling is we'd be luck so lucky to be able to put 100 acres of panels. I don't, that's very hard to accomplish, even with, uh, even with 300 acres going in. Pat had a question. I didn't quite hear the answer to Selectman Fogg's question. How much of this 100 acres of solar farm uh, how much of the electricity would actually come back to the town of Tilton? I, that, I'm nowhere near smart enough, smart enough to know the answer to that. Uh, well, 5%, 1%? So, so the energy, 
it's, I think it's, um, it's impossible theoretically to track the electrons once they get mixed in, in the power mix. So we'll be injecting the power into the New England power grid and it, it gets dispersed. Okay. This so company let me is a wholesaler. I know. So let me ask this a, a, another way. This solar farm, how is this going to benefit the town of <coughs> If you're going to ask for tax leniency, how is this going to benefit the town of Tilton other than the fact that it's going to be dormant and you're not going to send children to school? So the current tax revenue levy on those parcels will be a fraction of what we would be paying. So in other words, we would be paying a lot more than what you're currently collecting from those lands. And it's, 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 and the net benefit concept is, it's different from other revenue generating business entities moving in there because they will then consume the town resources like schools, hospitals, or, or police, uh, fire, water, and I, So if like you that. didn't, if you didn't build there, and in the future we had 20 or 30 people building there, it would probably equal what you're telling us, because then our tax rolls would go up even further in the future. So we've got a lot of questions. As you can see, um, thank you, I, I thank just, you for your, your questions. So uh, we've this will not, you know, this um, nothing's going to get done without a lot of consultation and um, a lot of studies and permitting. Um, so and we have a lot of time to discuss this. We're here to I, I just said one question: um, What type of formula do you use to produce bond for decommissioning? And how much you know around what that usually amount is, and do you ever do that? So we typically do post um, decommissioning bond, mm -hmm. um, and um, we make every effort to return the land to its prior condition or or better. Um, yeah. Peter had a question. Couple, yeah, a couple real quick questions if anybody has them. Right, right. We're a little bit over time. But, uh, I'm just not sure that if all this land's under current use, is whether or not uh, current use, which anything, if there is any policies under current use that would uh, allow this project or change what would be under current use so that it would no longer be in current use, so that there would be uh, that money that would go, that usually when it comes out of current use, goes into a particular fund. Right. That's what I'm wondering about. I mean, it's looking at 300 acres of land, and I don't know if you have to answer it right now, but that's, a, I think, important to the conservation. Yep, yeah, it sure would be. So they would come out in current yeah, use. Absolutely. It's no longer like they, they would have to pay those fees. They'd have fees. to pay the fees. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Time or whatever it is, time to. So I, I don't want to cut anybody short. Um, we did schedule 15 minutes. We're a little bit over. Um, we. Obviously, there's a lot of questions. If there's a real quick one, I would just suggest uh, you come back with your pilot before you go too far, because depending what you're looking for, um, you may not get what you want for your pilot. So, I think, Fong, thank, thank you. That's that's very uh, thoughtful. I wouldn't spend fifty hundred thousand and then find out no, it's not going to work. Um, real quick. Yeah. Um, so you said that. Back to the access road up at the top right. Um, you said that's not necessarily how you access the area every time, but you got that under contract and can use that to do some of your studies. How frequently do you expect that to be happening? Because that is a shared drive, excuse me, a shared driveway that I use to access my main driveway from my house and I've got two little kids that are out there playing almost every single day um, I mean even some of the other neighborhood kids ride their bikes up and down the driveway I just want to make sure that you're aware that there's families in that area when you're coming in and out of there and being respectful and if you can find any other way to access that it would be appreciated okay, so um, 
Vicky would be doing a lot of these studies. So I've been out to the property. I've, I am a very careful driver. I've been down that driveway a few times um, this past summer. And um, I'm aware, of, you know, it's clearly a residential area and there are people all around. And um, these, are, these are small vehicles that are using that access, not you know, construction trucks or anything like that. But I appreciate your concern. Thank you. We'll be aware. I just would hate to see a bunch of logging logging trucks going in and there. And I have to be. The, the access is very steep. Once you get past there, so I, I don't know what kind of access it would provide. For okay. So, well, thank you for coming, and we really will need to schedule some type of time for the public and um, to ask a lot of questions, and, and you'll have more information, I'm sure, at that time. And um, keep well, that's time. You know, uh, Pest House Road is located by Sykes the project. That is one of our main focus points to access the project, too. So I just want to point that out. There's more than just that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, did you send the book, wherever it is? We have a login book. Does anybody know where the uh, sign-in book is? It's over there on that white wall. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is uh, Selectman's reports. Uh, Joe, you're the first one. Okay. Uh, the mac and cheese cook-off uh, has been canceled due to lack of enthusiasm, or I scared everybody away because they can't compete. You signed up to quit. In any case, I'm going to be the rainy champion, I guess, for another year. I got the dates wrong. Actually, the mac and cheese cook-off is this weekend, the day after tomorrow. Well, it was. Uh, the Webster Life Fishing Derby is on the 15th, 16th, uh, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, I just checked today. They tell me the ice is 7 to 10 inches, and uh, most all of them are late. Uh, so right now, they're good to go, and we'll see you all out there on the ice. That's me. I am next. I'm going to skip over to uh, Pat. Um, yeah, I do know that's other business. Or... Okay. Um, well, you know I'll go just mention real quick. I did have. Um, I don't know. I think I sent it out to everybody. The DVP. Um, it's not like DVD. Or, it's uh, the initial boundary validation program. Um, it's from the census and um, if uh, Leanne's looking into it and checking it, it's to uh, review the boundaries um, for the Census Bureau. Yeah, if we can move everybody downstairs so we can keep going, we got a lot. Or, or you can stay up here. Uh, could, could you guys, um, excuse me? Could you guys slide downstairs and yeah. go last stuff on? Thank you. Pat. Oh, go ahead. Uh, next I, no, I, I'm oh, okay. sorry, I did the B. So, uh, Cedar Street, um, Kevin filled in the potholes. Now they're potholes again. Because it all came up. Did he fill up with gravel or a coal patch? Coal patch. Okay. 
Well, it's black. Yes, yeah, cold patch. Cold patch. So, and uh, I noticed coming from Maple Court, if you take a left on Maple Court towards High Street, it seems like the scene in the middle of the road is separated as well. So we have some issues before they needs to be taken care of in the road before they put the final coat on. Um, it was really nice to see Kevin out this morning during the storm. He just was going out inspecting wherever where the drivers were going and looking at their job. Just that was really nice to see that. I will update people, uh, selectmen on the CBA um, further, further in non-public. No, not a non-meeting now that it's over. Um, Prospect Street. I got a very angry phone call. Um, and I referred it to Jeannie in, uh, about signs, no parking here to corner <laughs> on the high street in why Prospect. You, why didn't you divert him to the PD? <laughs> Just take long. Uh, they called the P They called, in fairness to that, I will answer your question, Peter. They did call the PD, and the PD went down and said, I have absolutely no idea why that's done like it is. So, in fairness to to that, that's what happened. Moving on. Wait a minute. They didn't have any idea of how, why, how the signs were put up or why the signs were Why the sign was put up the way it was put up. Is the sign put up faulty? Nope. Where it was put up. So there's a little miscommunication about where the sign was supposed to go up. And as a consequence, now I was out there this morning looking at them. Uh, those signs have all come down until we get it figured out. Yep. The corner of High and Prospect. Larrow's property. Where we had the, the drainage across from Abbott's apartment. Oh. There's no there's no sidewalk there. It's just those big gravel rocks. Nobody can park on the side of the road. And it says no parking here at corner. And they put it in the lawn. Yeah, so it's on the wrong end. Right. Oops. Okay, so that's it for me. Catherine. Um, so um, what I have is non-public. Just an FYI, basically, just keeping up to date. Um, the rest was answered with um, Chuck. So thank you. And Peter. Uh, yeah, um, months ago, um, the lighting ordinance, isn't that in need of uh, being revised? Otherwise, uh, we have an enforcement issue. And so I'm not sure if planning board's planning on doing that. In past years, they usually use like the fifth Tuesday, but um, I'm just wondering. Uh, I've heard nothing about it. Okay. I'm bringing up what you said. How's, how's the sign ordinance? Is that need work too, or did we get that? Um, the only ordinance that we put together is in the warrant right now. I'm just talking about old stuff. Uh, the signage ordinance was changed a couple of years ago and put back to where it was some years previous. Mm -hmm. So it was changed. But at that time, the planning board was going to make yet again some more changes to it. I don't know it wasn't there at the time, but I will bring it up. Okay. Um, and just dawns on me that the planning board is next week. Okay. Um, do we have any t time frame on when the uh, Academy Street uh, paving reclaim project is going out to bid? I, I know that Kevin is working on that. He just talked to me about the other day. Um, I, I have a suggestion then based on listening to the uh, problem with the joint on Cedar Street that you put in an additional requirement that the any longe any joints get uh, tack coated, emulsion coat. Um, and that will help keep it from breaking apart. It will be a slight additional charge. I have, and, uh, you, I, have one, I, I forgot one, one item. The 
the award that we're going to do at town meeting, um, Jeannie has already ordered the plaque. So we just have to make sure that that person shows up. I'll talk to the chief. <laughs> that would probably be a good thing. <laughs> right. The other, the, the other question to the board is that, and I don't know if in the past, I can't remember in the past whether we've done this or not, but um, Jane is leaving the budget after, I don't know, nine or ten years as budget. Do we say something at the town meeting or not? Thank her for our time. Okay. So we to it's not a standard thing we do, but Wait, we certainly can. At the end, at the we end. have a little thing where we recognize special other business. I think that'll be great. I don't, I mean, it's just ten years or whatever. Is there someone else too? I think there's somebody else on conservation that's like 20 years or something. Um, we should be recognizing I, I these people. I, I would say Chuck is probably up to maybe 40 years. I know I've got 20, 24 years. I think that we should start recognizing people so that so that when you say at a town meeting with the with the amount of people in in there, you recognize that. These people have given up, you know, 20 years or 40 years. I mean, that's amazing, 40 years or 10 years or whatever. It's it's a milestone, 20 years of selectmen. He's just been over 20 on the sewer. And 20 years in 24? So, I yeah. mean, 24 years. perhaps maybe we could get a list and, and see who's on our committee and just do one one type of thing that, and just, you know, two seconds, just the, a minute or two, because Helen will be there with the gap. Put it on a slide. Well, it would also be nice. It's to do a whole, uh, whole thing, and maybe in the summertime at the park, and recognize all the people and what they've done for the town. Maybe it's, at the cookout. So it's a cookout. In the annual employee thing that we uh, talked about. On the town report. On the town report. On the annual report. The, the milestones. That, like the mi milestones. Better ask Tim if you can get that extra page. Oh, we can tell Tim we want that extra page. I think that's an excellent idea. We I do. Put it in this year. Start with this year. Start with this year. Just get the, like the, the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. More we'll work. And we're out to print already, probably. Yeah. Are you out to print already? Oh, gosh, no. Oh. No, but you made so. me do all the reports two, three weeks ago? Yep. For you. Wow. We've been doing other things, too. <coughs> be cool. Really? Um, so the only, the only caution I would, I would <coughs> give you on that, um, I think it's a great idea, uh, but inevitably somebody gets forgotten. That's why I said check it twice. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> Well, if we asked the if we asked the chairman of that committee, so if we went to Chuck and say, "Do you have any people reaching milestones that in there that we can recognize?" and if we went to budget and we said, "Do we have anybody?" then we've done our. I, I hear what you're saying there, but I don't know. I would suggest you start with the town clerk, since she is the one who has those records of members and how long they've been members, and then you could counter check with the chairs of. Committees, and then check again. It, this is a lot of work. Do we want to do it for the town meeting, or for this want, town meeting, or do we want to have it for well, a summer it, recognition? Because it, I think it should a be lot, written lot down. on the. On the I mean, you can leave me out of it. But. There's a lot on the plate for the, the before, yeah. already before town meeting. Yeah. We get. I'm just not saying it myself. Maybe we can work on just the town meeting and just have like a slide this town meeting and not put it in the report. I don't know how much work is it to honor people. Well, it's it's not it's not work to honor people. Certainly, they should be. You just don't want to forget some work. That and certainly, I'm happy to do it. But I'm just telling you, other things <laughs> are just going to get put to the side. Because that's going yeah, to really you know, it's going to take time. But it is a great yeah. idea, though. Mm -hmm. But I think going out, uh, people that are going out, we recognize the fact that they they have dedicated time in the community and service to, to the town. So I think possibly the, somebody from the board of selectmen or anybody could yeah. add. 
plan something out that they can announce at, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the uh, yeah. year. You can read it into the minutes of town meeting at the end. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We'll sometimes check what you do at the beginning. Well, he's already let us do one at the beginning. So we'll all, the beginning. We'll, we'll all, the selectmen can get together and yeah. find out. Right. Something to work on. Okay, next thing is uh, uh, the uh, town re administrator report. Okay, you have my report. A um, couple things under action items. The final warrant, you all should have a copy in your folder. It includes the condition warrant article on solar. And um, John, I don't know if you want to read that out loud, the condition warrant article. If you want to read it into the record? Or? <coughs> sure. Okay, so we have um, a warrant article, solar power exemption, town of Tilton, New Hampshire. Um, the warrant article says, shall the town adopt the provisions of RSA 72-61-64 inclusively, which provide for an optional property tax exemption from property assessed value for property tax purposes for persons owning real property which is equipped with solar energy systems intended for the use at the immediate site. Such property tax exemption shall be equal in the amount shall be in amount equal to 100% of the assessed value of the qualifying solar energy system equipment under these statutes. And it is signed by 29 voters, which was verified by our town clerk on February 4th. And then the only other, the, uh, the only other um, change or update to the final warrant is <coughs> it now notes that the budget committee recommendation, what their recommendation was on the sewer bond. John? What was it? They didn't. My understanding is they did not recommend. Time out. Um, and on, I can hang on. Well, change the mission. Yeah, so that's what I understand. They didn't saying. recommend, and then we've and I, not Peter had his hand up. Can, can we do it one at a time? Hold on. Okay. Who wants to talk? Catherine? So we voted, had a vote to recommend. That failed. Three to three. And then we had a vote to not recommend, and that failed. Three to three. So there's no comment from the budget committee. So then, okay. how can it say this article is not recommended? That's what we're, that's it my hand. Be. That's going to strike that out based so on their vote. I guess it's out. I'll go back to the chair of the budget committee. I guess I, we need something from the budget committee then because that was my understanding was the budget. That was what so I was three, three, three One at a time, please. Peter? Catherine voted last night. Well, I'm not the only one. I know, but you, are, you were voted last night. You're the only one here that voted. You can tell us the vote. Yes, so like I said, we voted to recommend and failed, three to three. I didn't have someone to... I, I understand. And then we voted to not recommend and that failed. And I, and I understand that. And what I'm saying is that what I was told this morning, that the budget committee did not recommend it. So that's what's in this... So that's incorrect. So, so I need to go back to the chair of the budget committee, and if the budget committee needs to sign. Well, hold, hold on a minute. I, I, I think I, the I, I was there. Catherine was there. Peter was there. I can say what happened was there was a vote to recommend. That vote was tied, so technically that vote fails, and the um, issue came up. If it fails, does that mean it's not recommended? And there was debate over that. So there was another motion that was made to not recommend, and that one failed too. So, I so think where is it at? So, so I think this the question is, is question. if it's a three-three tie, whether it's a fail, whether it's a recommend or not recommend, if it's a three-three tie. What is the answer to that? And I think we need to go and it's find that. It's a failure on both. So I think we're, we're going to have to follow. Yeah, we'll get a follow up and, and check on that. We both have. 
right, so um, the other item I have is there's a copy, I think, in your FYI file. We received a letter from a Franklin resident uh, who wants to purchase a piece of land in Tilton that they can lot on, on the High Street extension. Um, my, my understanding is, is that the real estate is tax deeded, so uh, RSA 80 colon 80 would apply requiring an auction or an advertised sealed bid. And my question to the selectman is, do you want me to pursue this? Do you want to sell this property? What would you like to do? Jonathan? Pat? This property went to auction. There were several people that bid on the prop property. The auction was, there was a designated winner. The winner said, eventually said no. We went to the second buyer. He said no, and it remained stagnant. Since then, the abutters wanted to purchase the property and, and was declined. And other people in the town have come and wanted to purchase the property. My vote tonight, my opinion tonight is no, absolutely not. It should either go out to auction or just stay. We haven't decided on how that is, but the abutters themselves wanted to buy it to keep it as green space. Peter? So we do have the ability to put it out to a sealed bid, right? So why don't we just do that and if we can recover our costs and get rid of it, put it on the tax rolls. Whether it goes open space or someone wants to put a house, if it meets the requirements. Just a little piece of property right on the corner. No, no. In the middle. Yeah. In between the two houses. This, this is the staging area for the sewer. Right. Right. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Not a vacant home. We had the abutters wanted to purchase it, and then we had. The, the Hobots wanted to purchase it with the stipulation of make, uh, writing it in the deed that it would never be a buildable law, and we still declined them. Anybody else have a? My only thought is that um, we should come up with what we've lost by it, and that should be a minimum, and do the auction because. Um, we get the most for it. Well, auction, you've got fees. There's yeah. no guarantee he can run it like up. Like I said, we put that money on there as a minimum. And then after that, we could do it by field bid, or we could decide to accept um, but one of the other bids. But we're increasing our cost by bringing in an auctioneer. That's going to be several hundred to a thousand dollars additional, where if we just seal bid, it's what our costs are today. We didn't do well with the auctioneer the last time. I don't think it's going to change. We did very well with the auction last time. We still own the property. Well, that's because the property owner reneged on it, not the auctioneer. And we actually... We still own it, it, so it didn't work. He may have run it up, and then they had second thoughts. Get yes. someone who writes it down and mails it in. I think they're going to be more in tune with what they've signed. They're not in the heat of the moment of an auction. I'm going to make a motion that we auction. Second. Motion and second. What separate discussion? Well, since I don't know how, it's I'm not your neighborhood. No, but it's a town piece of property that some people are asking to purchase it and to put it on the tax roll, and nobody's. Fine. We can't go and people have been, use this as a... The last five years, people have asked to buy that just to, for green space, and this board has refused them. Now somebody wants to come and buy it from another town, and you're going to all of a sudden change your mind and, and put it out to auction? Not all of a sudden change your mind. This is something that should have been a long time, done a long time ago. Right after that one failed, we should have settled it out. The Conservation Commission We have townspeople have that wanted to purchase that. Have them come to the auction. Sealed bed, it's easier. They don't have to be there. Cheaper. Any other discussion? I didn't see the letter that came in. 
to the FYI, wherever that is. Right here. I don't know. Okay. Any other discussion? Anybody else want to see the letter or or any other stuff? I read it already. No, that's fine. All those in favor of the option say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Let the record show nay. So, well, let me ask him, what are we going to do with this piece of property? If you didn't seal bid, I would have said a yes, but uh, the way you left it, it was too wide open for me. Make a motion. Make a motion to um, put it up for sale for the sealed bid. Give a minimum. Whatever we're out. Right, no, it's. Yeah. Second. How much time and when? Let's get some information next week. We can then do some tentatives, but I'd give them uh, 45, 60 days. Or whatever. You may want to try to wait till spring, let the snow go so they can walk it and put it out there now. Is mm -hmm. that plenty of time for people to know and we'll keep it on the website? And get plenty of bids and you know, you give an opportunity for those that have got it if they want to purchase it to get together. Something. Thank you so we have a motion and a second of belief. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show I say no. Okay. So it's so moved. Okay. I will do some more research and get back to you. Update on the Tilton North, Rhode Island. I talked to John Tague. Um, he'd like to meet with the Tilton and Northfield selectmen to discuss the transfer of the property. After some research and discussion, he, he did some research and he had a discussion with Tom Donovan, at, uh, the director of charitable trust for New Hampshire. He said there are two issues. One is a sovereignty issue, which um, that means we need to change the boundary lines. We actually need to make it uh, John property. be the edge. property. So the island is, will now be within the town of Tilton. Mm -hmm. And the second uh, issue is a deed problem, which I think you probably are aware of. Um, and we need to go to the Superior Court to get a judge in the AG's office to eliminate the reverter. And if, if you remember what the reverter was, it was the language mm -hmm. that said the property shall never be sold or in any other matter conveyed by the grantees. He believed, he said, in speaking with Tom Donovan, that they, the Superior Court and the AG would support this. And I think he had even had some conversations um, knowing that the town would always keep it uh, for uh, public space, which is what you've always told me that that's your intention. Um, and then, after that, it still needs to go back, because it's the boundary line issues, you know, it needs to go back to the towns again, the two thirds vote to make it to end it. So, I have not communicated this information with Moorfield yet, I wanted to tell you tonight. Um, I'm going to meet with their town administrator tomorrow. Or the deputy town administrator, um, but he'd like to come and, I guess, sit with all of you and just explain the process. Why is it the town of Chilton County own property in the town of Northfield? I asked that question too, and that's why I think you need to hear from him because. <laughs> I thought that was allowed. Yeah. I, Especially your buddy. Okay. So, um, are you all amenable to that? So what I'll yes. do is see if I can get the Northfield selectmen to come to a token select board meeting. Uh, we'll see. Um, Usually it's the other way. Around. Okay, so I have an update on timetable mail. So after some research, <coughs> the document that is available from the G.L. Rogers' uh, trust is called a release deed. And from our attorney, um, they want to know if you'll accept the release deed. The downside to a release deed is that the estate is not making any representations about what they may own, but saying that if they have anything, they're going to release it to the town. Our attorney advised that if we never intend to further convey the property, this should be an issue. Uh, there's also always a po possibility that someone could come forward and make a claim that they had an interest in the property. However, given the circumstances, 
where the town's already leased the property and no taxes are being paid on the property and the fact that it's unlikely that someone at this point uh, would make a claim to the property, it would make sense to just accept the release deed and move on. So that's where we're at with timetable, Mabel, because all they have on the other side is this release deed from the trust. So I guess that's what I'd like to hear from you. Would you are you is that acceptable to you? I think so. Yeah, that's that's gonna make the day. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. And the downtown parking meeting uh, has been changed to February 18th. It's gonna be at Elm Grove um, Realty. It originally was gonna be on that level, but I realized that I have whole duties myself. Um, so I and um, Officer Gilman will be at that meeting. And um, you can and see and Constantino. And Selectman Constantino. Mm -hmm. um, you already heard about the no parking signs issue on High Street Prospect. And then I got a question later on, later today about or from a gentleman whose wife is running for a select board. Uh, she's a Northfield candidate, and he wanted to know if she would be allowed to put her signs in the roundabout out here in front. I said, if I did not know, I would ask the selectman. I'm a hard no. Yeah. It's a historical marker. Yeah, right? it's a definitely. Marker it's and the very meaning of right there. Right there. Those are the, that's the veterans. And that, des that roundabout over here? Is the is the veterans, and you put anything in there, it just just desecrates the whole meaning of what is. So I'm sorry, my. So that, is that consensus? Is a no. No consensus. No. Hard no. Hard no. All right, that's it for me. Unless you have. Um, there's other places where they can put them. She shouldn't put it in the in the trough either. It's full of bulbs. Okay. <clears throat> um, people have done that in the past and. Okay. Yeah. Traffic. There's all sorts of places to put your political signs. Uh, the monuments out in front of this building, I don't think we should all of a sudden have a sign for it. Because if you do it once, everybody and their brother and their friends are going to be putting their signs out there. And I don't want that. No, I have a monument to dedicate, dedicate it to the veterans. Sorry. That's all I got, unless you have any questions for me. Um, Go. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, no, we have a problem on 24 more. It's a, you said you had some information on. We actually will have a non-public and the public So that's a later on. That, yep. Okay. It's coming up. Okay. Anything else um, under other business? We have visitors. They're the non-public. Yes. I oh. uh, just want to let you know, the board, that uh, the Historical Society has been given and granted by the state our charitable so trust. That, yeah. 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 We I meet every one, uh, second Wednesday of every month up at the Tilton Library of the Tilton School. Yes. Um, okay, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion that we go into non-public. As for RSA 91A colon 3, paragraph 2 um, is C. Second. Second. Constantino, yes. Fog, yes. Yes, and yes. Scanlon, yes. Let me take you just one second to shut off this camera. We are red. Red is wrong. The second, uh, FYI, to the second paragraph. I just want to make it clear. Let me make a little comment. I'd like to make a motion to seal the minutes of the non public session as they pertain to reputation, negotiations, legal issues. And every other darn thing that we discussed. <laughs> I think that pretty much covers all the highlights, though. That was good. Permanently. Second? Yes. All those, all those, yeah. all those things say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, no. Nice job. So you had
Okay, so we've got we've got a couple things here. Um, Tim is looking to have a RFP to recable town hall. Um, Cabling is 25 years old. They've moved everything, and uh, he's having uh, significant challenges. Uh, uh, he just wants permission to, permission to issue the yeah. RFP. Yeah. Yep. You do? Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. And also, um, we'd like to recognize um, over the past I think, month, or a couple months, we've been working on a lot of challenging issues um, with the police department um, project, um, just all the things with uh, the financing, the CBA, the audit. All of it's come down, and, and a lot of it, uh, Tim has been putting countless hours in trying to do this. And in order for Tim to do this, he's had a lot of backup help in covering some of his other duties. And uh, he wanted to specifically recognize Gail Bestick and Lisa Auger for all the time that they've spent covering for him so that he could spend more time on uh, these projects. Uh, I think, you know, we're very grateful for our employees that we have here that always seem to be able to lend a hand to each other when somebody else is getting an exceptionally hard, heavy workload. So, it's been wonderful. Yeah. Kudos to Gail and Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a process of putting a letter of thank you or recommendation or whatever in their files. I would be more than willing to Absolutely. That's a great idea. Yeah. Hey, we put the bad stuff in there. It seems like the good <laughs> stuff should go too. And, and on, on top of that, uh, um, you know, we, we as like when we have all kinds of requests that we throw out there, and, and we're always, you know, putting work on to people. I'd like to thank Jane for all these special things. That, I mean, we're constantly throwing stuff at you. Can you do this? Jamie's Can you do it. that? Jamie will take care of it. Sometimes we forget the, how big the list is that we've we've been giving you, but uh, it's uh, just for that you can come in early tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just so grateful. Thank you, Jamie. Love work to you. Truly, I don't think you knew what you were getting into. Oh. Now, John. Now, is there anything else from the audience or anything that? <laughs> comes before uh, so the at this time of eight minutes or ten minutes. I motion to adjourn. Eight. Second. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Oh, aye. aye. aye.